In our previous video, we went over how to solve a simple equation. When we have something like this, we now know how to find the value of x. If this material is new to you, you should check out our video on solving simple equations before continuing on with this one. Great! So now that we know how to solve a simple equation, we're going to learn how to solve a multiple step equation. What we mean by multiple step is that there are more than one operations to be performed in order to solve the equation. In this case, we see two operations onto x. We see a multiplication of 3, so we'll have to divide by 3 at a certain point, and an addition of 2. So we'll have to subtract by 2 at a certain point. But the question is, which one do we do first? Well, one safe way, this is probably the easiest way, is for us to perform our inverse operations in a reverse bed mass order. If you guys learned the order of operations as PEMDAS, where the P stands for parentheses, just know that bed mass is the same thing as PEMDAS, only B stands for brackets. Okay, so what do we have here? We have to deal with a multiplication and an addition. Bed mass order says multiplication is dealt with before addition. Therefore, reverse bed mass order would mean that we deal with the addition before the multiplication. Good. So what's the inverse operation of addition? It would be subtraction. So we subtract by 2 on both sides. Great. Now the only thing left is to deal with the multiplication of 3, and the opposite of that would be to divide by 3. And we get x equals 2. As usual, we can always check our answer by plugging 2 into x to see if we get a true equality statement. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 plus 2 is 8. And 8 equals 8. So it looks like our answer is good. Let's try to solve another equation. In this example, we have a multiplication of 2 and a subtraction of 5. Since we're going in a reverse bed mass order, let's deal with this first. We get rid of it by adding 5 to both sides. And finally, we will divide both sides by 2 and we get our final answer. Again, if we want to do some scratch work by plugging in 2 for x, you'll see that you got your answer correctly. Now beware of some of the common mistakes that students make when it comes to solving equations. One key thing to remember is that any operation that you perform onto both sides of the equation must be done to all of one side and all of the other side. Well, that sounds kind of hard to understand, so let's try an example together. In this example, if for some reason you wanted to multiply both sides by 2, is that okay to do? Well, the answer is yes. You can do any operation you want as long as you do it to both sides. But make sure you do the operations to all of one side and all of the other. So if you want to multiply both sides by 2, well, simplifying the right side is a no-brainer. But how do you multiply the left side properly? Well, you should not multiply 2 with just x over 2, or just the 1. Convenient as it might be, it is flat out wrong math to do this. Instead, you need to multiply all of the left side by 2. The way to ensure that all of this is going to be multiplied by 2 is to bracket everything and then multiply all of it by 2. And that makes sense, right? 2 multiplied by all of this big chunk in here. Hmm, now what do we do? Aha! We know how to simplify this side. We use the distributive property. We literally distribute the multiplication of 2 onto all terms 
inside the brackets. So 2 times x over 2 is just going to be x, and 2 times 1 is just going to be 2. And of course, on the right side, we have 4. So if you have no idea what we just did, try searching distributive property in our search menu, and you'll find a video that explains all of what we just did very well. Now, let's close this off by subtracting both sides by 2, and we get x equals 2 as a final answer. First of all, did we get the right answer? Well, we can plug in 2, and we get 2 over 2 plus 1, which equals 2. And since 2 does equal 2, we did get the right answer. Hmm. The only interesting thing here is that we did not do reverse bed mass order, and we still arrived upon the correct answer. We dealt with the division before dealing with the addition. So should we use the reverse bed mass order or not when trying to isolate our variable? Well, firstly, let's try the same question by solving it one step at a time in reverse bed mass order as we were taught to do so in the beginning of the video. Instead of multiplying by 2 to take care of the division of 2 first, we should be subtracting both sides by 1. We're left with x over 2 equals 1. And now, we would multiply by 2 and get x equals 2. So we got the exact same answer whether or not we went in a reverse bed mass order. The only difference is that in most situations, there's a lot more room for error when we don't go in reverse bed mass order. So if you compare the two different methodologies that we used, this one involved our clear understanding of the distributive property, which is a spot that some students tend to make errors. For this reason, a lot of students are taught to simply solve equations by doing inverse operations in a reverse bed mass order. And of course, we recommend that you go in a reverse bed mass approach as well. Cool. So let's try another example. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated. Okay. First, let's find out what the bed mass order would be. Then, let's reverse it and then deal with each operation at a time. Okay, so let's think about this. If x was a number and I wanted to simplify the left side, what would I do first? Well, bed mass would tell me to add by 1 first, then divide by 2, then multiply by 3, then add by 4, and lastly, divide by 5. Great! Now we have a mental list of bed mass order. So now let's reverse it. And for each one of these, we're going to find its inverse operation. The inverse operation of dividing by 5 is multiplying by 5. We do it to both sides. So the left side gets rid of the division of 5, and the right side becomes 10. Next, let's deal with the addition of 4 by subtracting by 4. So left side gets rid of the addition of 4, and the right side becomes 6. For the multiplication of 3, its inverse would be to divide by 3. Alright, what's next? Multiply both sides by 2. So we get x plus 1 on the left side, and 4 on the right side. And lastly, we need to subtract by 1. So our variable finally becomes isolated, and the right side equals 3. So our final answer is 3. So since this was quite a long one, let's try double checking our answer by doing some scratch work on the side. If we plug in 3 for x, we would get 3 plus 1, which is 4, divided by 2, which is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 divided by 5 is 2, and since 2 equals 2, looks like we got it right. Awesome! Now let's take a look at our last example. 
What's interesting about this equation is that we see our variable on both sides. But this isn't too difficult for us to solve. The key is to make sure we collect the like terms. We want our final answer to have our variable on the left side and of course a number on the right side. So first off, let's deal with this minus 2 on the left side by adding 2 to both sides. We simplify to get 3x equals x plus 8. And now, let's deal with the x on the right side. This x is being added to 8. So to get rid of this, we would have to subtract x on both sides. So notice how we're subtracting a variable to collect the variable onto the left side. It is completely fine to do this. Now remember that x is the same as 1x. And so 3x minus 1x is 2x. We divide both sides by 2 and we get x equals 4. And of course, we encourage you to pause the video and think about what just happened. Our objective was to have the variable on the left side and the numbers on the right side. We realized that x was being added by 8. That's the same thing as 8 being added by x. So, well, how do we deal with plus x? Well, we subtract x. It's the same inverse operation concept that we learned with numbers. So once we realize that one trick, well, really, the, the rest of it is just easy. And of course, after doing a long question like this, we encourage you to double check by plugging in 4, and we'd realize that we did indeed get the right answer. Awesome. One last easy thing that we will add to this lesson is this. When somebody asks you to solve an equation, find the root of an equation, or find the solution to an equation you're being asked to do the exact same thing. In the end, you're being asked to find the value of the variable, which is pretty much what we've been doing in this video all along. So don't get confused if your test randomly tells you to find the root or the solution of an equation. All you need to know how to do is isolate your variable onto the left side by doing inverse operations in a reverse bed mass order. It might sound complicated, but I'm sure you'll notice that in this video, it's really not that difficult to do. So take your time to try out some questions, watch the video again if you need to, and make sure you have a very deep understanding of what's going on when you're solving an equation. So congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, you are on your way to becoming a true solver of equations.